How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this animated loop right here. It's really fun, it's really abstract, and it's all about this sort of looping scale animation. We're gonna be scaling these objects and we're gonna be using some textures um, to create a loop. So it's really cool, it's really fun, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both Eevee and Cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to duckythreed.com and check it out. All right, so this is the project file you can get right here on Patreon. If you are a part of the Patreon, you can check that out in the description. Um, let's go ahead and make a new scene and create this from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead, shift A, and we're gonna get a plane, and that's all we're really gonna need here. Let's go up here to geometry nodes. I'm gonna kill this window here, and let's click new to get a new tree. So in the group input, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna hit shift A, go to mesh primitives here and get a cube. So we have our mesh here. So we have our cube here. We're gonna go ahead and get all of our vertices. So if you click and drag, you can click and type in 10. So now we have 10 and I'm just gonna go here on the size and just scale it up a little bit so it's a little bit bigger. And here we have our scene. If we go to wireframe view, this is our vertices. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get a instance on points. So shift A search instance on points right here and put it there. First thing we're gonna do, go up here to the um, viewport and click a cube and we're gonna just hit G and move him out of the way. So what we're gonna do is in the outliner up here, click and drag that cube we just brought in. So we're gonna use this as an instance. Now the reason why I did make another cube in geometry nodes is because you can't bevel inside of geometry nodes um, as of right now. So we have to use real geometry in a sense. So let's just plug that into the instance and now we have this crazy cube. I'm gonna click and drag and we're just gonna go ahead and um, get them to just be right here. Even though we didn't need to do this because we are gonna mess with that scale next. First off, I'm gonna click on that cube up here add a modifier and get a bevel. And then I'm gonna give myself a couple more segments, right click, shade smooth, and we'll click back on the plane. And let's go ahead and play with the scale. So I'm gonna hit G, move these guys out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is get a color ramp. So we'll do a color ramp and we are gonna get a noise texture. Noise texture here and super important, let's go from 3 to 4D, that's gonna give us our animation. I'm gonna bring my detail down to zero and my scale to 1.5. And let's plug that factor into the color ramp and the color into the scale. It's gonna go berserk. So we can actually start playing with that now with this color ramp. So these colors are gonna basically say how big these pieces are going to be. So the black portion is how small these anime, um, you know, the small cubes and the white is the large cubes. So basically, the closer you are to pure white, the bigger the objects are gonna be. So as I bring this down, objects get smaller. So that's really fun. I like the color ramp because I'm a visual learner. So being able to see those scales, um, scalings or whatever, seeing the shade helps me kind of know what's going on. So even though it's not the most technical way to go, I prefer it. Here's another fun little animation. If you wanna get some cubes just to kind of appear, you can do that, which is really fun. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and bring the size down to a reasonable size here on this cube. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this color ramp in. It gives you a more dramatic change from one to the other. Again, bringing that scale down to something reasonable and then getting this black here. I don't want it to be zero on some of those. So we'll bring the scale up to be something like this. So that's not, a, not such a drastic change in scale. And then if we play with the W here, you can see we pretty much accomplished the animation, though looping it is another whole battle, which we will get. First thing I would do wanna do is I'm gonna hit Shift D on this guy here. And then right here, I'm gonna click two. That makes a new node tree. And what I wanna do is go ahead and just delete this. And then right here on the size, I'm gonna bring it inside of this cube. This is just for aesthetics. I don't. I didn't wanna have a completely hollow 
um, animation. So I put a decided to put another set of cubes in here. Now I got lucky and these cubes are actually pretty much fitting perfectly. Um, but a lot of times say your scale is gonna be kind of out of whack. So just go ahead and put your scale of the cubes on the inside however you want. But this is the first time recording this tutorial that those basically look perfect. So now with that said, I am gonna go ahead and hit this drop down right up here. This is just preference. Um, I'm gonna click cavity and shadow. And that just gives you a more, just a better viewport experience. So here we go. And then again, if we click on this outer cube set, we can play with that W. We go ahead and move that. And um, now we have our animation, but first thing we need to do is loop it. So here's what we're going to do. Let's get this W to zero. It's very important. Now this next process, I do need to give credit to Joey Carlino. So this is Joey Carlino. He has really good tutorials. I've enjoyed his channel ever since I found it. Um, really cool stuff. This tutorial specifically is great, face scaling with geometry nodes. So it makes a really cool um, animation with this. So I found out how to loop noise texture, the W of the noise texture from him um, a couple days ago and I thought it was really brilliant. So check him out. I'm gonna link him in the description. Uh, but I wanted to give credit to him for how to loop this whole process. So I'm gonna hit the noise texture and I'm just gonna go ahead and just delete it. Make sure these are exactly the same. That's really important. So I'm gonna hit these guys, hit G just to move them over. I'm gonna get a mix RGB. So we'll get a mix RGB and then we'll plug the factor here. So this is a bit of a weird um, setup, but it is, it is what it takes to loop this. It'd be fun if there was just a little loop button, but that's not how this goes. So here in that timeline, I did go ahead. Uh, I didn't really say how to do that. I uh, deleted the timeline to show you how to do it. So I'm right over here, if you see that plus icon, drag up, click this icon, and this is the timeline icon. So here we go, I'm gonna hit the back arrow. Now, very important, go to your edit and preferences and in animation, make sure you are on linear, very important. So I'm gonna use 250 frames. You don't have to do that many frames if you don't want to, that's gonna affect the speed. So right here in the mix, I'm gonna bring it to zero. Go back to frame zero, of course, by hitting the back arrow. I'm gonna hit I after, as I hover over it go to the very end and drag it over to one, enter. So that's important for that. Let's go back to frame zero. Here on this one, start at zero, I'm gonna hit I, and at the very end, I'm gonna use five. Now, the larger the number, the faster the animation is going to be. So you can really figure out how you want the speed to be based on this number. Uh, I'm gonna explain that again in a minute so you can get a better big picture, but I'm picking five for this. So go back making sure that was done correctly. And then I'm gonna hover over this, hit I to kind of set that in. So now you can see this W is changing. It starts at frame zero, at W of zero, at the very end, ends at five. Now, let's go to this guy. You want it, we, were, we want it to start at the very end at zero, basically where this one started here. This is pretty much loop theory in a sense. So I'm gonna hit I on the W and go to the very end. And because this one ended, we'll go to frame zero, this one ended, at positive five, we're gonna make this one negative five. So negative five, enter, and hit keyframe. And so now if we go back to the very beginning, nothing changes, but it loops. Now, I'm gonna explain again. If you want this to be faster or slower, what you'll do is notice how this one started at zero, and at the very end it ended at five. Say you want it to be quicker, double it. We'll make 10. That means at the very end, this one will be zero over here, and then you bring it back to frame zero here, this bottom noise texture will be negative 10. So positive 10, negative 10, positive five, negative five, and then the rest is zero. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that clearly, but to me it makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's so if you want to be slower, instead of using positive five and negative five, you would use positive three and negative three, just to kind of wrap your head around it. Do it a couple times, it'll make sense. Um, but that is how you loop the W on these textures to get something really cool and really fun. Um, so now if we press play, we are in fact getting a looping animation. And that's essentially the whole tutorial. All right, so now we're back in the main viewport area. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's how you make this animation loop, but I'm not satisfied with this tutorial. We need to actually make it look cool with some lighting and a little bit of a kind of a scene. So what I'm gonna do is hit Shift A and get a plane. I'm gonna hit S5, Control A, and then apply that scale. And then I'm gonna hit the Tab key. And I'm gonna hit tab, click right over here to this edge select. I'm gonna click an edge and then I'm gonna hit EZ. So it extrudes it on the Z axis. And then let's go ahead and put a bevel modifier on this thing. So 
bevel this right here, bring it some segments. There we have that. Now let's go ahead and bring this guy up and I'm gonna hit R twice to give it kind of an interesting rotation. Just make it look a little more interesting than otherwise it would be. I'm gonna hit scale up and shade smooth that. I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go here to the front. I'm gonna hit shift A and add a camera. So let's go ahead and bring that up and then bring that way back. What I wanna do here in the camera settings, I'll click on the camera, click on the little green camera icon and bring my focal length to 85 millimeters and I'm gonna hit zero, um, almost perfect. So I'm gonna hit G and middle click and bring it out a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and light this really quickly. So I'm gonna go here to my cycles view, I'm gonna hit shift A, get a light, get an area light, bring that way up here. I'm gonna hit S to scale it up and give my power at like 300. I'm gonna hit shift D and then I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. So we get a nice light that direction and then maybe bring that brightness up a little bit more on both of them. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift D and bring one over there and then hit R. And we're pretty much there. We'll make this one 500 on the brightness. Now we've kind of lit this up uh, the way we want it to look. I'm gonna go here to the material preview. I'm gonna click on the plane back here and let's get a material really quick. So I'm gonna click new get a nice light blue, something like this. And then I'm gonna name it blue. So now what we need to do is select this cube here, hit that drop down and click blue. And now all of those um, instances also have that blue texture. And if we press play, we now have this scene looking really, really nice. If I hit the render button, let's see how it looks final rendered. So this is how the final render looks here in Cycles. Really crisp, really nice. Um, what I'm gonna do here in the uh, render settings, I'm gonna click on the camera icon and give my max samples at 150 and leave it denoised because there probably will be a little bit of noise. Now, you can render this out one of two ways. If you wanna do a PNG sequence, so by default, it's gonna say PNG, just make a folder and export out all your PNGs as a PNG sequence. If you want Blender to compile a MP4 video for you, um, you are at risk of crashes, you lose your render, but I do this all the time, it's pretty stable. Hit PNG and we'll go to FFmpeg video, um, right here on container, go here to MP4 and output quality perceptually lossless. Of course, pick your destination to render it and you'll be done. And by the end of it, you'll have a really cool looping animation. So there you go, that's how you do that. There's a lot more to it than may meet the eye but it's a really powerful concept and it's really fun. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you wanna check out Real Time Materials, again, that is in the description. Uh, yeah, see you guys in the next tutorial.